Learning and practicing self-accountability is the way to overcome rejection sensitivity dysphoria in ADHD. Rejection sensitivity dysphoria, as it's often referred to, is a feature that's often associated with ADHD. It is characterized by an intense fear of being rejected or fear of being judged by others. This can lead to self-consciousness with extreme self-monitoring, social anxiety, and isolation. People who suffer from rejection sensitivity dysphoria feel that they are unworthy of love or acceptance. They often feel that they're not good enough or that they don't belong. If you've had ADHD your entire life, it may come as no surprise to you that a childhood filled with being told you're doing something wrong, that you're a failure, that you're a disgrace to your family, will eventually take root into your subconscious mind and make you feel like you actually are a failure. And this is one of the reasons why comorbidities such as depression and anxiety are so prevalent in ADHD. So if these experiences occur when you're young, you're gonna spend your teenage years and young adult years thinking to yourself how unworthy you are of whatever job you have, whatever friends you have, and whatever relationship you have, or insert whatever goals that you find relevant to yourself. When you have ADHD, you have a limit on your focus each day. And if you're spending most of that focus worrying about what other people are thinking about you or how much they dislike you, you'll quickly find yourself in a self-fulfilling prophecy dropping the ball all the time and living up to that fear that you are a failure and overreacting emotionally. So how do you become self-accountable? Focus on what you can do. If you remove that fear of disappointing others and focus merely on what you can control, you'll find that rejection sensitivity dysphoria has a much weaker hold on you. Acknowledge and become comfortable with the fact that you don't have to do things perfectly. That when you're trying new things or trying things outside your comfort zone, you're in the learning process and you don't have to be an expert or perfect at anything. You can learn from your mistakes and adopt the mindset that mistakes aren't necessarily a bad thing, but mistakes are a chance for you to learn from something. If you're constantly making mistakes over and over, I would take some time to figure out exactly why you're making those mistakes. Then you learn from that and adapt and grow. When asking yourself why you made the same mistake, it's important to do so in a non-judgmental way. So that way you're not pointing the rejection sensitivity inwards. Judge yourself on what you know that you are capable of. Don't judge yourself based on what you think others are expecting of you. And so you may find this very hard to do on your own. And as a psychiatrist, I can say that with modern medications, we're able to almost miraculously improve your attention and focus. However, when you're working against 10, 20, 30 years of all these interpersonal issues and rejection sensitivity, oftentimes you'll need a little bit of guidance and help from a therapist who's had experience in this. So if you're not able to work this out on your own, there's no shame in seeking out a professional to collaborate with. So in the end, it's your life and you have to make it happen. So go out there and do something, anything. See you later.